All right, Greg, right now you guys are doing a big push to reduce poverty through coal. I'm curious, a United Nations report just came out and it basically said that global warming is eventually going to cause more poverty, more inequality. How do we rectify those two things? The idea that you can use coal to reduce poverty and the idea that global warming is actually going to make poverty worse. Sure. Well, we kind of start from square one and that is if you look at the UN Millennium Goals from uh, 2000, they recognized the amount of poverty globally. And they had a goal then of reducing that poverty by 2050. You look at the progress to date, there hasn't been any progress. We then look at energy poverty. Um, there's about three and a half billion people in the world that don't have access to adequate electricity. One and a half billion people that have no electricity at all. In fact, half of the children in the developing world go to school that have no electricity. So our view is, is while they come up with projections around what climate change may do over the next 30 or 40 years, we're dealing with the reality of today. And the only way to make a difference today is to provide more energy. The only way to do that is to continue the use of coal. People forget and don't realize that coal has been the fastest growing fuel in the world over the last 10 years and is projected over the next three years to overtake oil as the largest single source of energy in the world. And it's all because of developing economies and their need to provide energy for their growing economies. I think the critics of that would say though, at what point are we kind of cutting off our nose to spite our face? At what point are we just looking at what the demands are right now and not thinking about the long-term ramifications? Sure, well, and there are a lot of folks that have that view, I guess I would say is, all of those projections are model-based projections. I have to deal with the reality of today. The reality of today, in my view, is the environmental um, conditions that half the world's population live in are not going to be improved unless they get access to energy, unless they can be lifted up out of poverty. And yours is, of course, an industry that deals with a lot of regulation. It seems like politically, socially, even technologically in some quarters, coal has kind of fallen out of favor. It's not the hot thing. So how do you reassure your investors that coal is going to be the energy source of the future in two decades and three decades? Sure. Well, at the end of the day, you look at global demographics and you look at what's happened in the last 20 years and you look at what's happening right now in terms of the growth of coal globally, um, number one. So you say, first of all, it is here to stay and it will continue to grow. So the question is, how do we advance the use of coal, the technology of coal, so that we can meet some of the environmental goals that we have? That's going to take technology investment and it's going to take a turnover of um, as we phase out old coal, we need to be building new coal. And then over the next 10, 15, 20 years, let's continue to invest in the next generation of technology that potentially gets to a point of zero emissions or near zero emissions from coal plants, including CO2. And that would be carbon capture and storage. All right, Gregory Boyce, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Good to be with you.